When you're the parent of a six-year-old, sending him off the first day of school, you suddenly find yourself hoping very hard that your school is a good one. Hoping that he has a good teacher who will understand him, that the classrooms are light and warm. as you did yesterday. But you do want him to grow, and you encourage his independence. Skippy Gordon, first grader. Yesterday, when Mother came with you to sign up, Miss Temple said you could feed the fish. Careful, not too much. She said you could, and she remembered. Then she asked you to find seats around the tables. The first day of school. The first day of a planned routine which will envelop you for half your waking hours, and which will continue the next 10, 15, or even 20 years of your life. What time and thought and effort we have put into our public schools. All this that you, Skippy Gordon, shall learn reading, writing, arithmetic, and many other important things. Learn them, yes, but even more important, learn to use them naturally and easily throughout your whole life. Miss Temple is a good teacher, professional, competent. Skippy and the others are going to learn their three R's. Some will learn sooner than others, but they will all learn. For Miss Temple has a plan. Miss Temple knows that Skippy will learn best those things he himself wants and needs to learn. Good morning, boys and girls. Well, here we all are, and we're going to have lots of fun finding out things together. Suppose we start by finding out each other's names. Let's start at this table here. I want you each to stand up so we can see who you are and tell me your name. Now, I'll write it up here on the board. Now, who will be first? My name is Gail. Gail.
My name is Skippy. Skippy? Skippy watched Miss Temple write. That was his own name she was writing up there. Of course, he was Skippy Gordon, and that was his name. It would be stretching a point to say that Skippy can read his name, but he knows that those letters are his name, one down from the top in the third row, right where Miss Temple wrote it. Later that day, Miss Temple read them a story. Miss Temple knew that by listening to and liking stories, the children would begin to understand the many interesting things to be found in books and would want to read books for themselves. And all the time Miss Temple read, his name, Skippy Gordon, stayed up there on the board where Miss Temple had written it. When Miss Temple finished reading the story, they talked about it. How many fish did the little fisherman catch? How many fish? Already Miss Temple has made a beginning on the three R's, reading the story writing, a simple lettering, and arithmetic, how many? Well, Skippy, what did you learn in school today? That's a big question. Skippy did find out some things, but he hasn't labeled them, today I learned. What's the matter? Don't you like school? Uh, it won't be so bad once you get used to it. Not like school? Won't be so bad? Is school supposed to be something he's not to like? During the first week, Skippy and the others learned that clay, paste, scissors, and crayons were more than playthings. Clay can tell a story as well as words. Joan brought some snails for the aquarium to help keep it clean. They learned a new game to play at recess. They took turns and found that by taking turns, everybody had a chance. They listened to music, tried out sounds and rhythms. painted pictures, and Skippy made a picture of a house, his house. children learned many things. And Miss Temple was learning, too. Learning which children were ready, eager for the next steps. Which children were puzzled, needing patience and understanding to help them along.
but his whole name, Skippy, was up there on the chart. Of course, it was his picture and should have his name on it. to say that Skippy has learned to write, but he has made a beginning. And more important, he has done it because he, Skippy Gordon, wanted and needed to do it. Bike course. <laughs> You've got a good tricycle. What's the matter with that? I mean a real bike, a two-wheeler. I don't want a baby's trike. <laughs> well, we're going up awfully fast, aren't we? Can I, can I have a bike, a real one? <laughs> we'll see. Maybe when you're a little older. A real bike costs a lot of money. He said he would see how much older, how much money. Well, Skippy, you're still thinking about what you're going to draw? Maybe you'd like to draw some of the things that you made yesterday. Miss Temple knows Skippy well enough by now to see that something is bothering him. She does not insist that he get to work or pay attention, for she knows that his attention is on something that is bigger, of more immediate importance to him. She'll keep an eye on him and help when the opportunity offers. Things have been going well for this year's first grade, the most responsive group she's ever had. Of course, every group seems to be the best. Once you begin to know them as individuals, they continually surprise you with their alertness, their eagerness to learn, with the understanding they brought with them to the school. They're coming along, not all at the same speed, and some are better at one thing than another. 
But things are proceeding. Proceeding according to plan. Part of Miss Temple's plan is to know each child better. To know what each needs and how best to help him. She knows that Joan is quick to grasp a new idea, but loses interest quickly too. Sydney seems to understand how things fit together. Writing and telling stories will permit him to explain the things he knows. Eileen waits to be told what to do. She's just beginning now to do the things she herself would like. Frederick needs experience in just being with other children, in doing things together. Linda was well along in reading and writing when she entered the class, and she takes pride, perhaps too much, in being best. Skippy find a reason of his own for learning is a part of Miss Temple's plan. After several periods of planning and discussion, the group has decided on a trip downtown. This will give them a common experience, one they can share. The stores were full of exciting things, and Skippy saw a bike, a real one, a two-wheeler. Right? Hardware. Now what do we buy in hardware stores? Bikes! Bikes! Yes. Bicycles. A reason for learning. Skippy has given Miss Temple a clue. Reading, writing, arithmetic, spelling can be dull things indeed if Skippy has to put aside his desire for a bike in order to learn them. But if these things can become a way of knowing more about a bike, well, learning becomes something Skippy wants to do. By the trip to the stores, Miss Temple has led the group into a common experience. Each child knows firsthand what the others are talking about. And in talking this way, a child learns to express himself clearly. Perhaps they could make stores right here in school. Who would like that? If they divide into groups, they could make a whole street of stores. Let's see. Who would like to be in the hardware store? There's lots to think about and decide. And perhaps they should decide on a certain time each day for work on the stores. Yes, there are many things to be learned from the stores. And the bicycle is a part of it all now. Carolyn, what did we say here? Where did we go? We went to the store. That's fine. Ray? We saw people buy things. That's right. Gail? We can buy things too. Good. Larry? We buy things with money. Reading and writing go naturally together. Ways of finding out and then telling about things they do and see and think and feel. These simple words have real meaning based on the child's own experience. And as he writes the words, he begins to learn the shape and form of his letters. This natural, easy approach to the three R's is all a part of Miss Temple's plan. Snack time offers practice in simple arithmetic. Blocks, a way of learning and working together. And as the days pass, the stores begin to grow and take shape. It's satisfying to build things for yourself. And you do have to get the stores built first if you're going to sell things. 
things like bikes. Reading not words, but the meanings that lie behind the words is the basis for much of Skippy's future learning. Miss Temple knows that some children learn to read more quickly than others. She gives the quick readers plenty of material to keep them interested and does not put pressure, which might make him dislike books, on the child who reads more slowly. Pictures develop an interest, a desire to know what the words say. Some children can paint a story better than they can tell it. Sharing a common experience enables the children to make a story of their own. And as for reading from real books, they are available and ready, but there should be no hurry. For to read well, a child must be ready, must know a tremendous lot of things, things which he brings to the printed page to give the words meaning. Some of the children have read several books. Among these simple stories are the planned pre-primers which build vocabulary of simple but necessary words. Drawing, painting, modeling, building are all ways of communicating and working with these materials helps children become ready for the meanings which we attach to the symbols we call the written word. Eyes, muscular control of the crayon, and understanding must all be ready for the complicated task of writing. Skippy Gordon is not the first six-year-old to want a bicycle. Miss Temple remembers other boys and ways a professionally alert teacher can use the child's own reasons for learning. Just what is a bicycle anyway? A bicycle is travel. It is history. It is economics. It's geography. A bicycle can be anything and everything. And for Skippy Gordon, it can be a reason for learning. But is a bicycle something which Skippy can actually hope to achieve? Will his parents want him to have one? See my bike. Well, that's a fine picture. But bicycles cost money. You know, I think Skippy's getting big enough to need a regular allowance. Well, I, I guess anybody who can make a picture like this is old enough to have an allowance. Would you save it to buy a bicycle? Oh, boy, can I? Well, how long will it take to save enough money? It'll take quite a while. Daddy and I'll talk it over. Come on now, it's time for you to go to bed. What a kid. The holidays march across the calendar. By spring, Skippy and the others have learned many things. Some have learned more quickly than others, but they have all learned. Skippy has begun to read. More important, he does read. He has discovered that books tell him many interesting things he wants to know. Skippy has begun to write, and he does write. He has found out that writing is a way of telling things to other people. And he has learned some arithmetic, not separately as a special subject, for numbers are as natural as words, a way of telling and knowing things. How much is a bike? Four, seven, five, oh. I'll take it. 
four, seven, five, O. Oh. All this is the beginning of arithmetic. How much is four, seven, five, O? Oh? It's quite a lot. More than four times as much as you've got here. But you've done fine to save this much so soon. Besides, how do you know you can ride a real bike? Twelve dollars and fifty cents. I have to ask my dad first. Who'd have thought the little guy would stick to his saving, find the bike he wanted, make the deal himself? Well, it just goes to show goes to show what? That another boy has a bike? Perhaps it shows that Miss Temple's plan really does work. That Skippy's interest in the bike could be used to help him learn reading, writing, arithmetic, yes, and much more. That modern teachers understand this way of teaching gets better results than memorization, meaningless drill, and stern discipline. And best of all, Miss Temple's plan is no secret. Other teachers know this way of teaching, and as Skippy grows and learns through the grades, they will be there waiting to help and guide him as he meets new problems. Yes, Skippy, you're really on your way. We wish we could go with you, Skippy, and grow up just once again. Mm -hmm.